Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. And I think you all are feeling better after the coffee. Uh, thanks for coming here. Um, so today, we're going to talk about imposter syndrome and unconscious bias training. Um, just to tell you, I don't know why, but I'm feeling imposter syndrome right now and <laughs> while talking in front of you all. Uh, so to start with, uh, I will just go to the introduction part, who we are. So I'm Amita Sharma. I am diversity advisor currently uh, working in the DI team for Fedora. And uh, I'm the council member as well, uh, ambassador from India. And I work for Red Hat as well as a senior quality engineer based in Pune, India. Uh, so uh, I have my uh, teammates from the diversity uh, inclusion team. Uh, so they're going to introduce themselves. Okay, so hi, I'm Yana. Uh, I come from Albania and I'm part of uh, hackerspace that we have there, Open Labs. Uh, part of Fedora, I'm part of the uh, ambassadors uh, group for the EMEA region. And also I'm part of uh, different sub projects like uh, diversity and inclusion team, uh, come ups, um, and sometimes I like to do other things when I have free time. Uh, and yeah, part of Fedora, I like to contribute to other open source communities as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so hello, I'm B. Uh, I'm from India, but right now I'm living in Germany. I'm a student here studying data analytics. In Fedora, I contribute to the community operations team, mostly on data analytics stuff. And I'm also involved with the diversity and inclusion team uh, for their different initiatives. But, um, and I'm also involved with other communities like Mozilla and, yeah. Yeah, and I'm also a Google Summer of Code mentor this year for Fedora. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Justin Flory, FAS JFlory7. Uh, I've been a Fedora contributor for the last couple of years. I mostly am active with the community operations team and the diversity and inclusion team. And for all of us with this team, we're really excited about this workshop because it's an opportunity to kind of show some of our own biases that we bring into working in open source project communities and becoming more aware and conscious of those biases. And spoiler alert too, uh, you'll find some more information coming up in a new or an upcoming Fedora podcast episode. So keep an eye out for the diversity and inclusion. Uh, episode from Eduard on the Fedora podcast. So, so yeah, I just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, this inter this workshop is very interactive. I said this earlier, but we would really appreciate it if you sit along the center instead of being so distributed. And yeah, it would be really nice. Don't be shy. Come on, come yeah. on from the yeah. tables. <laughs> exactly. See, I can also stand behind this desk and just hide. So I'm not doing that. So <laughs> please come in, uh, in the center, come in the front. So this is the agenda of uh, the workshop we have. What is the imposter syndrome and unconscious bias? We're going to talk about it a little more in detail. We all know about the definition, aware about it. But uh, am I audible? OK. So uh, we know about the definitions, of course. But we're going to gonna go deeper about it. We're going to know more facts about it. And we will explore ourselves if, if there are any symptoms we have about these things or the people around us. What to expect from this workshop? There are lots of games we're going to play. So usually in the session or all of the sessions you are sitting uh, at your place and just listening to one person. So this is not going to happen in this workshop. You need to move a little bit and, um, and increase the steps on your uh, whatever you're, you are wearing, the MI band or whatever. <laughs> so be ready for that. Be a little active. You had a coffee. Why do we need to talk about it in Fedora? So uh, we had a fantastic talk from Rebecca. And we know that uh, the problems exist. Right. So, but we always try to ignore them or just tr try to deny them. So that should not be the case. Uh, we we should ex uh, you know we should be aware about that these problems or issues exist and 
That is why we are here, the open source communities and the people in the open source community who are the contributor, they, ha they face these challenges or the issues. So that is why we would like to discuss these things here in this workshop. How can we manage such feelings in our day-to-day -day life? So we're going to give some tips. And you will um, you know, come to know after doing some of the activities about these tips. And I just quickly want to add that we are so glad that you are all here and that you want to be a part of this workshop. So we feel that you at least recognize this a little bit. But even if you don't, we have like a few slides to explain you what it is. Right. So th uh, this is for the heads up that not everything you try today will feel um, comfortable. Uh, so well, it is nothing to scare you, but the activities we're going to do, the things we would uh, relate with, uh, the things which you will do and make you think about your past or the things that you have encountered in your life, may, uh, you may become emotional about that or stuff like that. So there is nothing like that to hide or you know feel uncomfortable about it. Even if you do that, please feel free to take a moment and for yourself. Okay, so uh, now we'll start the imposter syndrome workshop. Uh, it will be about an hour or so. And yeah. Yeah, so this program is divided into two parts. First, we will uh, talk about the imposter syndrome. Uh, we have a few slides, and then we have an activity for the imposter syndrome. And then we'll have a small break, and then we'll talk about the unconscious bias, what it is all about. And then we have the activities related to the unconscious bias. Okay? So, what is exactly the imposter syndrome? Any of you uh, would like to talk about it? What what do you feel what it is all about i know the re definition is there and you are reading very fast but still <laughs> deep inside what do you think what it is or maybe by a show of hands how many of you yeah. have felt that you know you feel like you're faking it or you feel like you don't deserve the opportunity that you've had just by show of you hands you ever felt like you know okay. why, why is it why am i the person I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm why am i here why am i this imposter why am i this i'm such a fake <laughs> When are they going to find out that I'm a fraud and I have no idea what I'm doing? So, Yo. show, show of hands. I know, I know for me it's been that way a lot of times. Exactly. So that is what it is. We all face. So this is an um, emotion, human emotion, that you face it in your life once, twice, or more than that, or you are in, f in that phase that you are feeling it. It's a feeling. It's natural. So nothing to hide about it and nothing to ashamed about it, right? So. Um, we're going to learn about it via activities more um, instead of just reading through the slides. And here is one picture in the next slide, which we liked a lot. That's why I put it in the slide. And she would like to explain it. <laughs> yeah, so how many of you have ever felt something about this that you were talking about some topic with your friend or um, your coworker? And you said some a few things, but you still felt like you didn't know much about the issue. Maybe it was about politics or some international affairs or just music or anything. And you felt like you were just going on and on about something you didn't know. Like, just show your hands if you, if you have ever felt like this. Just nodding along. Yeah. Kind of understand what's going on. Yeah, maybe at flock a few times. <laughs> Okay, so I have felt this a lot too. That's why I like this um, I like this image. And I feel like this is like a good representation of how imposter syndrome catches us in our daily lives. Like we don't realize it, what's happening, but we start feeling ashamed of ourselves or that we don't know enough stuff to talk about with other people. So this is just one of those imposter syndrome moments which I wanted to show you. Okay, so this picture says a lot. Um, if you see, we, the people who are going through this phase of feeling that they think that they don't know much about the topic, but the rest of the world is so com accomplished, they know that stuff, they are talking about it, and they know everything. And the moment you start feeling that mm, I'm an unconfident, uh, I mean, not very confident about yourself, and that that is the moment you start you know stop even participating in um in the conversations for example um there was a meeting last night i was in 
and uh, there was a topic going on about containers and many people were talking about it and I was like, I felt a little uh, withdrawn from the discussion that I, oh, oh my god, they, these are the geek people, they are talking something very uh, uh, rocket science. And then the moment came, okay, I also use the container and I, I, I can probably talk about a sentence or two. And then I was not feeling very confident uh, that I should speak about it or not. And I was just thinking about it and then the other person just spoke about the same sentence which I was about to talk. So mm -hmm. for that time period, I was in this feeling. So, and this is the feeling which can come and go. This can be a phase where you are in for a longer time. Or this can be the thing which you have been facing your life long since your childhood because of some incidents. Okay? Yeah, especially if it's something like this. How many of you have ever felt like uh, everybody else has their careers figured out, their life plan figured out? Like they know they want to have babies, they want to get married, or like they know what they want to do in their life till they are old. But you f just feel like you are just going through day on a day by day basis. Like you just know what you want to do for the next 24 hours, or just like this week. This week I'm just completely going to concentrate on flock, and I don't know what I'm going to do after. Have you ever felt like this? So just like show your hands if you feel like this before. So yeah, so this is another like example of how imposter syndrome catches you when you are not aware of it. And you feel like everybody has everything sorted out in their life, their life is very nice and they're just, you know, breezing through, but I'm struggling with my daily efforts or with my tasks. So this is just a case of imposter syndrome. This happens with everyone. Like this is a short disclaimer, it, we will come to that later, but don't feel worried, this happens with everyone, this is not just you. And we will realize that in a few more slides. Yeah, and to add to that is, it is okay to be silly sometimes, it's, it's okay to talk your mind and even if you don't don't feel like it is correct or not it it's okay to be silly so you have to accept yourself how it is you cannot have all the knowledge in the world of all the topics so it's okay uh, to not to know few things so don't uh, you don't have to feel negative about it so next slide, do you feel like you are faking it? I mean, you are into a job which you have been doing since ages, I mean, many years, and and then suddenly you start thinking, okay, um, I'm no, no more good fit for this job. I'm just faking it, and what if my uh, boss figure it out? I will be kicked out of the job, and then carrying that baggage and the fear almost every day about it. Do you think you can relate? Just show your hands quickly. So, <laughs> so there are quite a few hands for all of these different uh, examples of imposter syndrome. So we know that some of us are feeling it. So we are going to play a quick game so that we can identify um, when we get caught with those sim symptoms or uh, I mean the game will help us realize what are these situations which can which yeah. lead us to feel feeling like an imposter, basically. And also, uh, sometimes we see a person is very confident, sometimes overconfident. And when she or he says that I'm feeling imposter syndrome I, or I'm facing this phase in my life, we say, okay, but you seem very confident, even the overconfident sometimes. So this is the side effect of the imposter syndrome. If the person deep inside feeling not very confident, they tend to show these symptoms that they are very confident. I mean, they are, they start faking it. So that is another side effect. So it's the game time. So you have a paper which Yona is distributing and I'll hand over the mic to uh, B to take it over now. So I hope you are all excited for this game. Have you ever played bingo before? Or yeah. Yeah. So it's like a bingo for imposter syndrome, but we have a few modifications to the game. Uh, we will call out the statement, and if you have ever felt like that before, uh, we want you to cross it out. Or if that statement applies to you, you should cross it out. And we will stop the game when we cover like a majority of these statements. And after that, we will just like do some introspecting and a show of hands to see how other people feel too. So if you ever feel like 
uh, un uncomfortable being a part of this game just feel free to take a moment uh, for yourself and i mean uh, maybe you don't want to cross out something so I ideally we would like you to be truthful to yourselves but if you don't feel like it we we encourage you to just you know uh, take a moment uh, the prize is okay. It's a secret. We are not going to know. <laughs> okay, so are you ready to start the game? Do you all have the paper for the bingo and a pen? Uh, I think tell yes. you, it's a very exciting game and it will let you think about yourself more. This is the time that you think or introspect your own feelings. So don't hesitate to play it honestly. And I am also playing with you people. Yeah, we are all also playing with you. So you will know how we fare to in this game. Okay, so is everyone ready? Cool. So uh, the first statement is that I should f feel lucky to have gotten into school, the job, the promotion, etc. Have you ever felt like this? If you have felt like this, just cross out the box. Yeah. So I'm repeating the statement. I should feel lucky to have gotten into the school, the job, the promotion, etc. Does anyone want me to repeat it or did you get it? Okay. So, yeah. So the second statement is um, I always hold back when working in a group or a team. Always hold back when working in a group or a team. So if you f have felt like this before or you feel like... What do you mean by hold back? Like you don't talk as much to the rest of the team? Yeah, you don't... You do your best or you don't... Like you don't voice your opinions. Okay, you don't voice your opinions. Mm. You hold yourself too. Okay. But not, you know, like not, in a not in your contributions to the group, but in the way you participate in the group? Yeah. 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 Is that yeah. The communication part. Example I stated about the meeting, uh, that I, I was partially aware of the topic, but still I was holding myself back because I was doubting what, what my statement would be valid or not valid. Okay, I can read the other one. I can use it. Okay. okay. So the question he asked is, what is the meaning of the holding back here? So when you have doubt on yourself, in, uh, in spite of that you know about the topic, but still you hold back to share your opinion and co and don't communicate. For example, the I have shared one example with you about the meeting where I I know uh, I was aware of the subject, but why I was holding back a little bit because I have seen people who are much more aware about the topic and I mean they develop the that product. So I was little holding back that I may or may not be correct about the statement I'm going to make. So that is the holding back here. So uh, okay, so, yeah, so the other statement, uh, have you ever said to yourself, I should be able to do everything myself, so I don't need others to help me and I can just do this alone? So the statement is, I should be able to do everything myself. Should we continue? Okay, so the next one. Um, never tell someone you met in a bar you are an engineering, uh, math, or science mayor. So, so have you? Uh, here we just don't want to, uh, like, it might be a bar or it might be a stranger. Like, you never tell someone, yeah. some stranger you met, like, in the first conversation space. that you are an engineering, maths, or science major. And or in your career. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. you feel probably that person would be better than you and you just don't say this in the beginning. Yeah. So I'll explain you an, uh, with the example that if you walk in the bar and you say that I am the docker uh, engineer or I am um, I'm the modular, modularity engineer and the person may start asking you the questions. Yeah. 
okay, and you have the fear, what if I won't have the answers to his questions? So that is holding you back from disclosing your identity. Or if you feel like uh, telling others that you are a science or engineering major is basically pigeonholing you into a concept or into a stereotype which you don't want to belong to. Okay, so can we move? I, I, I would like to uh, I share the joke. But I would, you like to share the joke. What was it? I want to laugh. <laughs> um, right, so, um, <laughs> Please, if you can. Okay, so I was telling my neighbor that this is actually like, I am a software engineer. It's actually the first left. time on my Chino profile. <laughs> <laughs> I was just making a joke. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Has it ever worked? Uh, well, not yet, but you never know. <laughs> and so, uh, thanks for sharing it. It was very important. Oh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> so, the next one. I should succeed at everything I do. Because you are afraid to fail, and you think that you need to succeed uh, on all the things that you do. Yeah. I should succeed at everything I do. And just feel free to say bingo when you hit bingo, OK? No. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so moving on, the next one is like, I should be able to anticipate problems before they occur. If you have ever felt like this, like if uh, I should be able to anticipate problems before they occur. So this might be related to your work, like some product crashing or some bugs or something, or that maybe you could have coded it better to avoid that fault. If you have ever felt like this, then just cross it out. OK, so uh, moving on. Um, I always share credit with others, even if uh, you did all the work. So the statement is always share credit with others, even if you did all the work. So if you have ever done this, maybe at your university yes, or school projects. <laughs> yeah, school projects, team projects where you know but your friends don't do nothing but you will put their names and add credit for them. Yeah. Okay. No bingos yet? Come on, enjoy my play. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next one is uh, always assume you will fail, so you will not be disappointed when you do. Um, I'm going to repeat it. Uh, always assume you will fail, so you will not be disappointed when you do. So this is basically about scholarships or like say ap job applications where you feel like you won't get the opportunity, so you just set up a negative mindset for yourself. Okay, so next one. I always panic before a test, presentation, performance, or interview. Performance evaluation. Or your presentation. So I'm going to be truthful. I'm going to cross this out because I panicked before this workshop a lot. So. But does it have to be always? Like always, always? Yeah, it says always. So always, always. <laughs> you have to follow it. <laughs> okay, and okay, so the next one is I was admitted or hired because of some kind of mistake. Yes, yeah, yeah. How many jobs we should have agreed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or so horizontal, horizontal, vertical, slanting, but it should all be in a line, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the statement is, I was admitted or hired because of some kind of mistake. So maybe in your university, you felt like you didn't deserve the uh, chance to go to that university, or in your job, you felt like it was some kind of mistake to get that position, maybe some glitch in the system or something. So if you have ever felt like this, just cross it out. Okay, so no bingos? Okay. 
next one um, i never never challenge yourself too much so the statement is that you never challenge yourself too much maybe at work or just uh, in studies or in personal life or everything um, do you want to go next uh, the next one, never show up men especially. Yeah, never show up men especially. So it basically means that you never talk back to uh, men. I guess yeah. this relates more to women yeah. who <laughs> feel like an imposter and they never talk back to other yeah. people. So we are giving all the girls out there an extra chance yeah. if they have ever felt it, you know, to get ahead. We, we, are on. we know you are near. <laughs> I think it's probably okay if there is some flexibility that you know it doesn't have to be always or never but if you have identified you felt this way before I think you a lot still, of times not just times. like once uh, sometimes it's not every time it's not always it's not never but like most I guess. often yeah. It's, yeah. it's still okay to cross the space mm, so then there are other points like yeah um, the next one is I always apologize for mistakes or for not knowing something. So I know I do, especially with my family, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the next one is like um, I always assume when people are complimenting you that they are just being nice like you don't deserve it and they're just being nice and telling you that uh, about the compliment that you deserved it or like you got it and so on are you sure there are no bingos yet <laughs> i'm purposefully trying to avoid my bingo here <laughs> what hmm. Uh, the always last statement assume yeah. when people are complimenting you, they are just being nice. No straight lines, horizontal lines, like slant lines somewhere there, just... <laughs> okay, so the next one is, um, I never make declarative sentences, like, statements like, I know the answer. So if you have, like, if you never confidently say that you know the solution or the answer or you never voice up, if, even if you know it, then... Or most of the time. Yeah, most of the time, basically. Okay. Uh, nobody wants it. Yeah, nobody wants it. <laughs> we are just going to take it. Uh, the next one is... If we could say, I have this, but that would be a different answer. So. <laughs> yeah. I see what you did. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you al always attribute your accomplishments to something other than yourself. Cross it out, people. Cross out things. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> okay, so the one after that is you do not let people see you studying or working too hard. Do not let people see you studying or working, working too hard. Are you sure? We have one. Like we have one. <laughs> How come nobody else has one? Do you want to just tell the point? Uh, okay, maybe this is like just the last two. If you don't get a bingo in this, nobody gets a prize. Like we leave it. Yeah, we take the prize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, so Leela got it. So, we have a special candy for you, but. Okay, we will give it to you later after the workshop. Nice. You went because of this, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. So, she. Would you like to share some yeah. of your uh, No! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can. Do it. Oh. Um. Come on. Say <laughs> hey, how you feel after this. Bingo. Yeah.
after this game, how do you feel? What should be collected from your memories, uh, which can be related to this, and what you did to perform? If you feel, uh, or maybe how you feel about winning the bingo. Okay. <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> thank you very yes. much. Thanks a lot. Anybody else who would like to share their experience while playing this game uh, would like to share some example which are relevant to any of these statements. Uh, we encourage you to come over here or speak about it so that we can learn from uh, you and how did you overcome them. I think you want to speak for sure. <laughs> Marie? B. A big clap for Murray. So Murray is a badges queen, Fedora badges queen. <laughs> so Mike is all yours. So I did not get a bingo. And there were actually things that you listed or named off that I've overcome. And I didn't cross them off um, because I look at my life and I see what I'm doing and I'm proud of it. And I've come to own that. And when people ask me about my life, I tell them um, proudly and people are always kind of impressed that I have a full-time job and I do this and I do my fine art. And there's a lot that I want to do and accomplish. And um, I guess, I'm proud to say that I did not get bingo <laughs> yeah, because I'm proud of you too. thank you because I've overcome some of those feelings. So, like when I f came to my first flock four years ago, um, I think that I struggled with a lot more of these things. But I've realized that it's okay that I'm not an expert developer or engineer or I, I don't do ambassadors or anything else. I'm here to do design and to contribute that knowledge to this community, and I'm proud of that. So thank you very much, Murray, for sharing your experience. So that is what is the bottom line is. You have to accept yourself. You have to respect yourself first. Um, because you cannot know all the topics in the world. You cannot be the expert of each and everything. Just be happy of doing what you want to do in your life. and. Accept it. Accept yourself, embrace your skills, and respect yourself. That is what it is all about. And we are also going to do like a quick show of hands. So you can uh, count the number of things you crossed out, and every, th every box you crossed out gets one point. So we did about uh, 15 to 20 statements. So I'm just going to divide them into some buckets. So if and if you are in that bucket range, just you know, raise your hand. So if you crossed out less than five statements on this bingo, just raise your hand. OK. Less than five? Yeah, less than five. OK. So we have three people here who crossed out less than five. Um, if you crossed out uh, five to 10 uh, statements on this bingo, Yes, so I guess most of us crossed out five to 10 statements here. And I guess that, I mean, it's equally balanced between everyone. And uh, if you crossed out more than 10 statements on this bingo, just raise their hand. Okay, so I'm going to raise my hand too because I almost crossed out everything I said somehow, but. Okay, so, yeah, but I just want to let you know that you're not alone. How, like, whatever uh, level of imposter syndrome you feel, you are, like, there are always other people who feel the same, and so you're not alone who feels like this. And, I mean, it might be because of your background or your experiences or something, but I just want to let you know that there are also other people out there who feel the same way. So we are quickly going to move on to our next slides and because we are running short of time for this workshop. Um, so after this, we, yeah, we wanted to basically this game was to identify like, how imposter syndrome affects us. So how this different uh, situations sabotage our uh, 
like our career or our work or academics and we want you to be able to identify these situations from now on so that whenever something like this happens to you you can recognize it and just stop yourself and take a moment and think like this is just my imposter syndrome speaking i'm doubting myself i'm not going to do it i'm going to rest and i'm going to be confident because i have done so many things till now i have been here for like for me 23 years of my life or like and i'm moving on and i'm going to move on from this too and i'm going to keep on moving forward so this one example i would like to share i was go going through the notes of b uh, sorry i'm sharing it uh, there were a lot lots of uh, notes notes written scribbling flow charts everything and in the corner of those notes it was written do it be bold and it was highlighted start with colors and everything so this is what you can do <laughs> in your life just to boost your morale and confidence yeah and we also have some tips for how to tackle imposter syndrome later on just in a few slides in a few minutes you'll see them and you can actually use them in your daily life when you feel like uh, imposter syndrome is affecting you uh, yeah so do we have time for that yeah so this is just a quick game uh we are showing a few quotes on the screen can you identify who said these quotes i mean you can so guess basic things even if you cannot say the name like so the quote is why would anyone want to see me again in a movie and i don't know how to act anyway so why am i doing this so so I mean, when you see the word movie for example you make the connection with an actress or actor or actor <laughs> yes yeah, some maybe oscar winning actor yeah what no it's not mel gibson you are very near the name is the same no it's not maybe Meryl. it's similar not no it's the same she said meryl she said mel ah and i said the name okay yeah she yes. heard it <laughs> So this was said by Meryl Streep and we all know how a great actor she is she has already won like eight golden globes and three academy awards and i'm pretty sure you have seen at least one movie with her in it so yeah. if not you need to go watch her movies go go, go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was her and even though she is such a brilliant actor she said that quote so it's not just us but like also famous people and celebrities who feel it yeah the successful people basically so this is another one and yeah so so i have written 11 books but each time i think oh oh they are going to find out now <laughs> i've run a game on everybody and they are going to find me out no it's not george r r martin no what no what i heard something no she's a poet memories i mean it i said she yeah jk rolling could have been an answer but yeah, this but quote is not by her this is the one we all watched yeah <laughs> she's a civil rights activist and also a nobel laureate yes so it it was said by maya angelo and Maya I mean, she won a Nobel Prize, and yet she feels like this. So, I mean, I can imagine never now. imagine myself winning a Nobel Prize, and I try to reassure that it's just imposter syndrome talking. That maybe I can win it, but still, she already won it, and she feels like it. So, we just wanted to let you know that it's not just like people like you and me, but also successful people who are like very ahead in their careers, in their life, and they still feel this. so this is an important thing which is happening to most of us and we need to uh, be able to identify like when this affects us and to recognize it and you know to effectively like handle it so that we can still uh, be successful or like move forward in our lives yeah so uh, just a quick question like do why do we feel like why do we feel this why do we feel like an imposter does anyone have any ideas i mean people should 
Not you are with them. Okay. Why do we feel like an imposter? Because it depends on the situation or the circumstances we are in. We, uh, we have more geek or skilled people around us and we feel a um, little underconfidence and we don't want to talk about the fact we know. Uh, that is an example of when we encounter the imposter syndrome. And sometimes we, uh, we have been failing you know, uh, continuously on some attempts and then our confidence is going low uh, on every attempt then after that also we start feeling that okay i'm not the one who can accomplish this in my life so at that point we also feel started feeling like this sometimes there are neg uh, negative um, thoughts and the negative discussions coming to, towards you from some people um, and you you know that they are false but still they are impacting your unconscious mind and that is how you start feeling negative about yourself so these are a few points Murray want to talk a little bit more walk <laughs> So something that, um, so something that I feel, and I think other people might identify with as well. Like, starting as a youth, like you see maybe an older, successful person. Like you're you're young, maybe you're seven, you're eight, you're twelve, and you think to yourself, that person has it all together. They have a career, they have a life, and you continue on, and you get those things, but your mind never really changes you're still with your own mind and like y you feel like there should be this moment where you're like I've made it I've I've done it all or I've accomplished these things but you're still you're still that same person so part of you like holds on or me part of me holds on to that feeling that I haven't accomplished that thing yet but I think in reality there's not going to be that epiphany moment there might be a moment where you feel the success or you feel an accomplishment or but you're still in that same mind that you've had your whole life i mean yeah. I, I don't know if anyone else f feels that way but i do yes absolutely and one of the points which is which you might agree or not but i'll give you the example to back that up your physical appearance also comes into the picture sometimes. For example, I love dancing a lot. My friend knows how much I love dancing. But I have never ever participated in any dance competition during my school or college days because I think I look bulky and if I dance on this stage, people will judge me and I, it'll look awkward or bad. Uh, but the, but when uh, I started doing it, after a long, long, long time, I mean, in the Red Hat Pune office, we have the opportunity to do dance on the stage and show, show it off to the people. The number of compliments I got, uh, even uh, the people who saw me dancing, I mean, they can tell that I dance well. So these kind of things, small things can hold you back. And I not, today I regret that that I, I never participated in any dance competition during my school or college. Why I have not done that before. So there is also a category where you, you feel like your physical appearance can come in between your success. So we don't have a lot of time. So I will say them a bit very fast. Uh, and Justin wants to skip the slides. Uh, so I don't want to say uh, again all the things that we said, uh, but we want to emphasize that um, I mean we we are not alone in this. So uh, and it's okay if we fail or or it's okay even to suck because in this way we will learn from our mistakes and uh, we will be better. Uh, so uh, we have, let's say, two, two kind of tips. When you suck at something but gradually improve, two things can happen, right? So you know what being awful at something really feels like? And you realize that you do have a talent or a perseverance, and this builds confidence at you. So have you ever heard of the quote like failures are the stepping stone to success? So it's like suppose you applied for a job, maybe you didn't get that job, but you got another better job because you had that interview, you practiced there, you networked with other people there and they recommended you to a better position which might have been a better fit for you. So we just want you to know 
that it's okay to fail that you might fail a lot of times everybody fails a lot of times but still like it will teach you something and you should take that as a learning opportunity it will teach you about hard work and it will teach you other aspects maybe and you will realize that you can keep going on and on so it will just build your perseverance okay. yeah so we just uh, this is a last like we have some tips uh, to tackle imposter syndrome so with the game i hope we taught you a little bit about situations where you can identify imposter syndrome and these are a few tips to tackle it if you have ever if you ever feel like imposter syndrome is creeping up on you or like you feel like your imposter syndrome is acting up again before say a big opportunity or something so you can uh, so the first one is like you should keep a journal so i i don't know how many people actually do this but i recently tried it a little bit and it can be anything like uh, some small points about your day about what you did or like how you felt so this will help you uh, basically identify uh, maybe imposter syndrome situations or like you might write about your, the challenges you faced and maybe later on after you uh, a few days you realize that maybe it was wasn't as uh, big as a failure as you thought it would be I agree that keeping a journal will help you a lot because even if you are in a job and after six months or one year you are assessed in that uh, job for the appraisal, uh, I never used to maintain a journal, but I have been done for a year. And every I'm, I don't think there is any human who can re uh, remember everything you do for a uh, one last year. Then my manager suggested me to keep a journal of what the things you have t have been doing, and I was amazed to. Look at that. The points, the number of points I have written for myself for that year, which I have done, which I would never have been able to remember if we, I have not written them in a journal. And I, I think also one thing to note there too is after you do it for a while, you'll go back and you'll read something you wrote, and you'll be like, you'll you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, did I really think that way? Or like, wow, I was so silly of me to think that I I couldn't do this thing. And you'll look back, you know, a year in hindsight and realize that whatever these challenges or these things that you were going through or the things that you were trying to accomplish were, they'll feel like, you'll feel silly or you'll feel, it'll be, it'll be a funny experience just to go back and read and be like, wow, like that's how I was thinking even just like a year ago and see how things have changed for yourself. So. Yeah, and another one I want to quickly emphasize is that maybe you should build like a positive community around you. You can. Uh, have a group of friends who discuss like with whom you discuss challenges you faced recently or you discuss about your work or just like personal life so basically build a professional support network and you can ask them for advice or just you know talk to them so that you know that they are also going through similar experiences or they have also faced these kind of situations sometimes in their life and that will just help you keep moving forward so yeah and another, another thing we wanted to say was that, uh, and this is very important, like you have to recognize that failure is a part of learning process. So I don't think I can emphasize this enough. So I know it's tough. I have been there myself. I have failed multiple times. In, I have applied for so many scholarships and I'm not sure, how, like I have, I got maybe one or two. So, but still, it's a learning process. With every application, I learn something new about myself, about what I'm doing, and that um, I'm actually contributing something here in Fedora or uh, in, at my university, and I'm uh, doing something good, even though it's a bit, even it's if it's little or something. Yeah, so uh, I just want to quickly go through this. And uh, so the first one is like, keep a journal. Second one is you set some goals for yourself. So maybe you can uh, take up running, just set a goal that I will run one kilometer every day. Uh, and when you do that, you feel a sense of accomplishment, like you did something small already and you do it consistently. So it will help you, uh, you know, feel better about yourself that you are already doing this much and it will uh, create that positive energy into your work or like personal life. And the third one is what we already talk up, talked about, like build a professional support network. It can be professional or it can be a group of friends. Uh, and that can also help you get like, by 360 degrees we meant like 
It can help you get diverse feedback. So you will know different opinions from different people about what they are going through. And you will know different perspectives about the same um, thing, which you might not have thought before. Update your CV. You have many more accomplishments than you think you have. Do not underestimate yourself in your resume. Write it all there. Maybe they can go through it. They can read it. It's, but you have to put yourself out there and recognize that you have done it all and be proud about it. The next one is get a coach. It can be your friend or some peer or maybe like somebody, yeah, some mentor or some senior from your work or university, someone. It's just someone who has uh, gone through the same challenges or like who can guide you through the process. Uh, we already talked about recognize learning and failure are okay. And yeah, keep a positive feedback file. It can be your journal. Just write that. Um, just write something simple like, I'm glad I did this today. Like, this is one thing I did today, and I'm very happy about it. Or something simple like that. And it will uh, help you reinforce uh, positivity in your life. Uh, the next one is do things outside of work that make you feel good. So basically, take up hobbies. Like we said, you can set some small goals and try to achieve that. And the last one is like, yeah, this is very important, that you say it out loud to someone you trust, like uh, that you talk about your imposter syndrome. So the f first step to tackling imposter syndrome is trying to identify it. And the next one is like uh, saying it, like recognizing it and talking to people that, uh, that this is happening so that you learn how they are doing, like if they are feeling the same or like how they are uh, tackling it and what or, they are doing about it. Or so they'll call you out when you are feeling like an imposter, but you're really yeah. You really authentic. aren't, like, yeah. OK, so these are a few tips from us. And that is the end of this imposter syndrome workshop. We will have the unconscious bias and training workshop after this. And yeah, if you thanks a lot for being here. And if you have any questions, um, just let us know now. Uh, we will have, we plan to have a five minute break, which might be a little bit shorter because we are running a little bit out of time. So it might be a two minute break. But if you want to go out and grab some water or coffee or just feel free to do that. Does anyone have any questions? So hey, um, I found out that uh, it doesn't really help me to know that other people feel the same thing, feel imposter syndrome, because um, I realize that, well, they just have this syndrome, but they're still way better than I am, and I shouldn't be here. So it doesn't really help me to know that. What helped me is a video that I saw once on the internet. Um, you see, I don't know if you remember that. It was kind of popular. There was this guy dancing at the music festival. He was on a hilltop, and he was dancing in a crazy manner, all alone on the, on the sign. There were people sitting. And it was long, like four or five minutes. And then there's another person who comes and joins him and, and dances in a crazy manner, too. And of course, 30 seconds later, there's like a crowd of people joining them and all dancing in a crazy manner together. So what I learned is, yeah, exactly. So what I learned is, is it's very important to to have leaders and to have people who, are, who do the, this crazy thing, but it's extremely important to have uh, the number two, the, per the person who joins them and who creates the whole movement. So um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world where everybody is pushing you to be a leader and all that, I think it's very important to not be the leader, but be the second person who's going to create this movement and, and push and help move things forwards. So I don't really strive to like be better than everybody as I used to do that. Well, both my parents have teacher, are teachers, so I was kind of pushed in that way. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's also important to like not try to be the best at everything. That's all. Yes. Thanks a lot. OK, so we are going to have a quick break, a few minutes, and then we'll start the next Unconscious Bias Training Workshop. 11.32. Thanks. Yeah. And we have a lot of games planned there, too. So be excited. More prizes for you. Mm -hmm. 
If you'd like, you're welcome to. I just, okay. um, so how do you know like if you really, really suck? And it's not just like in your head. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes you might be good on something else. Yeah. So I think an important factor in that moment is to say, who are the people that are surrounding me? Um, you know, what is what is the community or group? You know, do I trust them? Do I know them? You know, and you have to in that moment once you decide and define like what that community is to make the decision, and then. If How do you do that? Well, I mean, 